Hey, good morning, everyone. I hope that you're doing well today. I want to welcome all of my Mount Pleasant and Impact family uh, to this uh, Facebook Live uh, post related to day two of our special Let Us Pray 40 Days of Prayer experience here at uh, the church. I hope everybody's doing well uh, and surviving this crazy, crazy time that we're experiencing right now. Uh, Sandy and I are doing okay. I'm still, at least for now, getting up and coming to church each day and trying to uh, take care of things here around the church, still having uh, Zoom meetings with staff and trying to stay on top of all the things that we're doing related to uh, the weekend worship services and uh, planning for Easter, all kinds of things. None of that stopped. Uh, lots of good things happening. We uh, one of the things I'm excited about is our ability through the Impact Center here on campus to continue to provide food for a variety of people who are in need, and uh, we're doing that in a drive-through format, and we're also doing a drive-through uh, food pantry format for our Impact sites: Impact Old South Side, Impact Fairfax, and Impact Bethany. And uh, we put out a hotline uh, for people who are in need, and I know that. Uh, beginning yesterday afternoon, we started to get a lot of calls related to that hotline, and so I was excited about that because this is a great opportunity for us to reach out and serve people in a variety of different ways, and I'm glad that the church is continuing to do that because really, you know, that's at the heart of Mount Pleasant Christian Church. One of our uh, four core strategies is to serve people across the street and around the world, and uh, certainly this is a great time to do that. But uh, it's also a great time for prayer, and uh, here we are on day two of the Let's Pray experience, and the verse of the day today, if you haven't already looked at it, is Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17, and this is what that verse says, the Lord your God is with you, he is mighty to save, he will take delight in you, he will quiet you with his love, he will rejoice over you. What a great, great verse. Again, it's Fred Meadows on our staff who has taken the lead in creating uh, the verses and the prayer prompts for this 40 days of prayer. Uh, and this is the prayer prompt that he wrote along with that verse. He wrote, what a poignant picture, the father singing a song of joy over us. Imagine yourself as that restless child and God taking you in his arms to quiet you, expressing his love to you through a song. The more you cry out, the more he tries to comfort, console, and bring assurance that everything will be all right. Even in our heartache right now, we can rest assured that we are being held in the arms of the Almighty. He dries our tears, comforts our fears, and welcomes us into his joy as he sings a song of love into our hearts. And then the specific prayer focus that Fred has written for today is pray that the church would experience a sense of inner joy and peace during this time of fear and uncertainty. And that's certainly a worthy, worthy thing for us to pray about today. I'll tell you the part of the verse, Zephaniah 317, that really stands out to me is that phrase there in the middle where Zephaniah writes about God, he will quiet you with his love. I think it's a, a great day to be reminded of just how much God loves us. In fact, I, I looked at some verses just before I uh, came on to the Facebook live feed today, just reminding myself of uh, what the Bible has to say about God's love. And uh, I've got a few just written down here uh, and not in any particular order. I just want to share them with you as we think about uh, God having the ability to quiet us, quiet our fears, quiet our anxiety, quiet our hearts uh, with the reality of his love. I love these words from Paul in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. He writes and says, For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. And what I really love about those two verses is that you read them and you get the sense that you could pretty much write in or pencil in about anything that you can think of that can come along to disrupt our lives. And Paul would just say, Add that to the list because it's another thing that can't separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a comfort that is. Um, Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 10 says this, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Not 
even the mountains being shaken at the core of their existence, not even a power or a force that can do that can separate us or shake us from our understanding of how much God loves us. I love 1 John 3, 1, where John just simply writes, as a matter of fact statement, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God, and this is what we are. And I like especially the way it says that God lavishes his love on us. That's not just piecemeal love. That's not just doling it out in, in little portions. He lavishes his love on us. And then finally, I love these words from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. The very, at the very core of the reality of who God is, is his love for us, and that love will never change. Uh, let me just read you a little phrase that would go along with that verse. God's love is the only love that never falters and never fails. Take comfort in your faith and know that God truly loves you now and forever. And so I go back to that verse for today with regard to our Let Us Pray 40 Days of Prayer experience that says, The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. God wants to quiet our fears and our anxiety and uh, any worries that we have about today and tomorrow with the reality of his love. We can take heart in that. Um, I don't know that uh, even the most clever, creative person can come up with a story or an illustration that can describe the reality or the depth of God's love. I was... Um, looking for some kind of a story that I might be able to share this morning uh, focused on God's love. And I came across a story in one of those preacher sources that I don't want to give away, but I came across a story about a woman named Dorothy Sayers. I, I looked her up and she, she lived in the late 1800s, uh, early 1900s, I think to about 1953, somewhere that was her timetable, but she was an, a novelist. And she wrote detective novels uh, focused on a fictional character that she had created whose name was Lord Peter Whimsey. And uh, he was an aristocrat detective in the 1930s who solved all kinds of crimes, very successful in his profession. She wrote a whole series of novels and stories that were all about uh, Lord Peter Whimsey. Then about halfway through the detective series, a woman shows up in her novels, a new character, a woman. And Sayers gives this new character the name Harriet Vane. And she was herself a female mystery writer. And she was also, at least in her fictional character, one of the very first women to ever graduate from Oxford. Well, once she shows up in the detective series, ultimately she and Peter, the main character, fall in love up to that point, uh, Peter is uh, kind of an unhappy, broken man, a bachelor, not a whole lot going on in his life outside of his career where he's very successful. But uh, on a personal level, he's really lacking a lot and missing a lot and really just described as a broken soul. And the interesting thing about this is that um, this character, this fictional character named Harry, Harriet Vane that Dorothy Sayers introduces into the detective series is really a lot like her because just like her, this fictional character is a novelist. Just like her, this fictional character was one of the first women to graduate from Oxford University. And so when you kind of start to connect the dots, then you can come to the conclusion that Dorothy Sayers, who was the author of this series of detective novels focused on this uh, this man named Lord Peter Whimsey. She looked into the story that she was writing. She saw the main character. She fell in love with him. She saw that he had a need, and so she put herself in the story so she could meet the need of his life. And really, you could say that's what God did. God looked down at the world he created and he looked at the, the people, the characters that he created in the world, and he saw 
all of our great need and he loved us so deeply that he wrote himself into the story into the person of Jesus and he came into the world to heal our broken lives and that reminds us again of just how deeply God loves us and I want that to be the thought that we hang on to today as we are in day two of this let us pray 40 days of prayer experience in the Bible communicates to us over and over again in a variety of different ways that there's pretty much no link that God won't go to to demonstrate his love for us and it's that love that's going to quiet our hearts in times of uncertainty when we face the unknown it's that love that's going to quiet our hearts when we feel afraid and that's the word of encouragement I want to give to all of you today and so I want you to uh, spend the day thinking about the depth of God the great depth of God's love for you maybe you can get a Bible out today and uh, just look for verses that focus on God's love for all of us uh, back in the old days for me I would get out my um, my uh, thesaurus my uh, my Greek uh, tool book there and and I would look for verses that talked about the love of God now you can just log on to your computer and go to Google and just type in the Google space Bible verses about God's love and boy you could spend the rest of your day probably reading about the reality of God's love but as you do I'm sure that will fill your heart and uh, quiet your heart which is what Zephaniah talks about in our verse today so as we think about that let's uh, bow together and let's have a time of prayer uh, and just ask um, for the ability to experience that inner joy and that inner peace that God makes available to us in times of fear and uncertainty that comes primarily uh, from the reality of his great love for us. So I'm going to pray. You pray along with me. Father in heaven, I thank you for another day of life today. I pray that none of us would ever take that for granted. I pray today as we uh, as we go throughout the rest of the day that our hearts uh, would be quieted, our, our, our fears would be abated, that our anxieties would be diminished as we think about the reality of your love for us. Help us to remember those powerful words from Paul in Romans chapter 8 when he says, nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. And help us to remember that you, God, you love us so much that you look down into the story of our lives, you saw what was missing, and you basically wrote yourself into the story of our lives in the person of Jesus to come and to give us the opportunity for healing and for a new life. And that is so, so powerful for all of us. I pray, Father, that uh, you would watch over each of our families. You would keep our families safe. You would protect us. I pray, Father, that you would continue to guide and direct those who are in leadership positions locally and, and uh, nationally and around the world as uh, decisions are made uh, all the time related to the next right steps to get to the other side of the spread of this coronavirus. I pray, Father, that you would uh, give wisdom and discernment and guidance to those who are in those positions. I pray, Father, that you would help us to take advantage of the slowdown time in our lives to draw near to you, to find some maybe productive things we can do each day around our house or, or wherever it might be that we are spending our time I pray that you would uh, help us as families to really connect with one another, maybe on a deeper level than we've been able to uh, recently because of the busyness of our lives. Help us to, uh, to know that you have a plan and a purpose uh, in all of this. There are good things that can happen for all of us in this uh, time of slowdown and this time of disruption. And Father, I pray for uh, our church, for our Mount Pleasant family, our Impact family, uh, all those who worship here at Mount Pleasant and Greenwood, all those who experience worship on a weekly basis at the Impact Center here on our campus, at Impact Old Southside, at Impact Fairfax, and at Impact Bethany, I pray, Father, that you would uh, just guard and protect each and every one. I pray, Father, that you would help us to find ways to serve one another and encourage one another through this difficult time. And I pray, Father, that you would just help us to experience the peace that you offer the peace and the comfort that you offer. Take our, take our minds off of ourselves. Remind us of how important it is to stay focused on you and how 
the important it is to be focused on how we might minister to others and help us to experience great, great peace as a result of all of that. We love you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, I see a lot of folks are joining online today, and I, I really appreciate that. I hope that you're encouraged. Uh, last night, Sandy and I had the opportunity to have our regular Monday night small group meeting. We did it via Zoom, uh, and boy, it, it's amazing that I was able to do that because I am so inept when it comes to technology, but I got some people here who help with that, and everybody in our group was able to join except one who kind of lives out in the country area, isolated area that uh, doesn't have a great internet connection, but it was great to see each other's faces and just uh, uh, learn about prayer requests and be encouraged rather than uh, focus on the weekend message uh, this particular week since uh, so much had happened. I just uh, read from Matthew chapter 6 and, and drew some encouraging truths out uh, from some words that Jesus spoke beginning in verse 19 all the way to the end of the chapter. And we talked about uh, how important it is uh, to allow times of disruption like this to help us to reset our focus and our priorities. Um, you know, that's what happens when we, when we go through a, an unknown and an uncertain time like this. It reminds us uh, of the things that really matter the most in our lives. Uh, the second thing we focused on was just uh, this the reality of God's provision. Jesus has that great section in Matthew chapter 6 where he talks about uh, the birds of the air and the flowers of the field and how they don't, uh, they don't seem to be uh, uh, troubled and, or they don't grow in vain or, 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 or live in vain because God takes care of them. And if God will take care of uh, the flowers of the field and the birds of the air, how much more so will he take care of us as his children? And then finally, that uh, Matthew 6 ends with those words that we shouldn't uh, uh, worry about tomorrow. We should just focus on today because each day brings enough trouble of its own. And just a reminder uh, to let's just focus on today. Um, let's just focus on making today the best day that it can be, the most productive day that it can be, the most positive day that it can be. Because honestly, when you think about it, as we, as we are here together in this setting today, tomorrow doesn't even exist. And so why waste our time uh, focused on a day that doesn't even exist yet? So let's just focus on today and make today uh, the best day that it can be. So my, my prayer for you today is that um, you, would, you would feel the love of God in your life and that love of God would quiet you. I love the way Fred phrased that in his, uh, in his little devotional thought, just uh, the idea of God singing over us and just caring for us. Um, let that be the picture in your mind today. Uh, be uh, be uh, comforted by the knowledge that nothing can separate you from the love of God. And uh, just know that you're in my thoughts and my prayers. I love you. I'm praying for you. And uh, I look forward to meeting you again tomorrow as we uh, continue on in this special Let Us Pray 40 Days of Prayer experience as a church, as, as our church Mount Pleasant, as our Impact Church. Uh, we're going to do that together. So God bless you. Have a great rest of the day.